Hi, I'm Heidi Hesrick and I'm here with Lucy today to do the final tour of the skeleton video in our four-part series. So today we're going to be talking primarily about the hands and the feet. We'll also get into what's the difference between the axial and the appendicular skeleton. And there were three videos before this, so if you haven't seen them, you might want to go back and check them out. There is a link to those videos in the description down below. Also, before you start watching, you should print out the handout that comes with this video, which again is in the description of the video down below. And you'll want to get some colored pencils. You can do colored pencils or markers, ideally at least five different colors to be able to do the handout. Let's start with the hand. I think the hand is pretty incredible if you look at how many bones are in it. There are actually 29 major joints in the hand as well, and there are three different kinds of bones. So let's start with the most proximal of the bones of the hand, and these are called the carpals. And you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then if you flip it, you'll see one more, number eight, which is anterior. So this is the anterior view of the hand in anatomical position, palm forward, and this is the posterior view, the back of the hand. So we have eight carpals in our hand, and they have this irregular shape and make up our wrist. And then the next set of bones are called the metacarpals. One, two, three, four, five metacarpals, four in the hand and four in the thumb, or one in the thumb. <laughs> so the metacarpals are right here. They make up the palm of the hand and the back of the hand, and they allow this arch to form that lets our forefinger and our thumb come together. So we hear about opposable thumbs, but this is a key aspect of what it means to be human to do this, and it's because of the metacarpals that allow this shape to form. The final bones are the phalanges. We have three phalanges in each finger and two phalanges in our thumb. So you can see the thumb can only flex right there at that joint for the phalanges, so there's the one, two, but each of the fingers can do this. So those are the three phalanges making up each finger. On your handout, color the carpals one color and note how many there are. Color the metacarpals another and note how many. And color the phalanges a third color and note how many. And then add up how many bones that is total in your hand. Write down how many bones you have in one hand, and then consider the fact that you have two hands. So double that number for the total number of bones in the hand. A typical human has a total of 206 bones in their entire body. Take the number that you got from the two hands added together and divide by 206 to find out what percent of your bones are in your hands. Flying animals like bats, flying mammals, and birds actually have the same bones that we have in our hand. And I'll show you a picture. Not only do those animals have the same bones in their hand, they have the same, they have the same bones in their forearm and their upper arm as well. So look at that picture one more time. You'll notice the humerus, the radius, and the ulna, the carpals, the metacarpals, and the phalanges. So even though we seem so different, we have all of the same bones in our forearm, and in their case, in the wing that we have in our hands. And not just that, but even dinosaurs, if you look at a Tyrannosaurus rex, it has the same bones had that we have in our hands, um, wrist, and our arm. They're just shaped differently. Now we'll come down to the foot. The foot is really similar anatomically to the hand, which is so cool because it's shaped differently and it functions really differently in humans, but they're very, very similar structures. Let's start with the part that's most anatomically similar to the hand. It even has the same name, and these are the phalanges. So in the pinky toe, there's one, two, three, and then one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and the big toe is like the thumb where there's one, two. You can actually color those the same color in the foot that they're colored in the hand because they're all phalanges and they're very similar in structure and function. And then 
Also similar are these, but instead of being called the metacarpals, they're called the metatarsals. And again, we have one, two, three, four, five. So carpal means wrist and tarsal means ankle. Meta means middle. And so these are like the middle between the ankle and the toes. And up in the hand, they're the middle between the wrist and the fingers. Then we get to the tarsals. The tarsals are much bigger and bulkier than the carpals of the wrist. So we have this huge one right here that makes up our heel. That's one. This one's also quite large too. Three, four, five, six, seven. Seven tarsals total. So in the hand we had eight carpals, but in the foot we just have seven tarsals. So one less foot, one less bone in each foot than we have in each hand. Now, just like you did with the hand, go ahead and add up how many bones are in a foot and then how many bones are in both feet together. Now tally those up with the bones in your hands. So your two feet and your two hands, all the bones together and divide by 206 bones in the body total to figure out what percent of bones are in your hands and feet. And that's always kind of mind blowing to think about. Okay, now I have my own foot in the frame. So one fun fact about the foot is that it is one of the most ticklish areas in the body, and that's because you actually have 8,000 nerve endings in each foot. So it's super sensitive. And you might think it's annoying that your foot is ticklish, but it's actually a sign of good health because if you have poor circulation to your foot or nerve damage, neuropathy, you can lose those sensations and that can be a real problem. So one last cool fact about the foot and the toe is that if you ever lose your thumb, they can actually do a toe to thumb surgery using this toe and replace your thumb with this toe. Obviously it's not gonna be as large as your thumb, but it can function fairly well in place of a thumb. The final thing I wanna show you is the difference between the axial and appendicular skeleton. So your entire skeleton is broken down into two sections, axial and appendicular. The axial bones run along the body's axis. So this is the body's axis. So they include all of the bones of the skull, the rib cage and the sternum, and the vertebrae, which are more posterior. That's all, and that includes the sacrum and coccyx. That's all in terms of axial bones though. They don't include the scapula or the clavicle, and they actually don't include the pelvic girdle, the parts that flare out, only the sacrum. The other part, and you're gonna color that, go ahead and um, on the back of your handout, you can color in which bones make up the axial skeleton and label them. The appendicular skeleton is all of your appendages. So everything that's coming off of the axial skeleton that's attached to it. So it includes all of the bones of your arms and hand and all of the bones of your legs and feet but it also includes the clavicle and the scapula which articulate to help make your shoulder and it includes the pelvis the bones that flare out so not the vertebral column not the sacrum but this part of the pelvic girdle is actually considered appendicular as well if you have completed all four videos of the tour of the skeleton hopefully you have gotten to know the human body much better uh, please leave some comments down below about whether these videos were helpful for you. And thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.